3. The Temptation of Eve Adam had just finished his first 100 years on earth when Serapitatia, upon the death of his father, came to the leadership of the Western or Syrian Confederation of the Nodite tribes. Serapitatia was a brown-tinted man, a brilliant descendant of the one-time chief of the Dalmatia Commission on Health, mated with one of the master female minds of the blue race of those distant days. All down through the ages, this line had held authority and wielded a great influence among the western Nodite tribes. Serapitatia had made several visits to the garden and had become deeply impressed with the righteousness of Adam's cause and shortly after assuming the leadership of the Syrian Nodites, he announced his intention of establishing an affiliation with the work of Adam and Eve in the garden. The majority of his people joined him in this program, and Adam was cheered by the news that the most powerful and the most intelligent of all the neighboring tribes had swung over almost bodily to the support of the program for world improvement. It was decidedly heartening. And shortly after this great event, Serapitatia and his new staff were entertained by Adam and Eve in their own home. Serapitatia became one of the most able and efficient of all of Adam's lieutenants. He was entirely honest and thoroughly sincere in all of his activities. He was never conscious, even later on, that he was being used as a circumstantial tool of the wily Caligastia. Presently, Serapitatia became the associate chairman of the Edenic Commission on Tribal Relations, and many plans were laid for the more vigorous prosecution of the work of winning the remote tribes to the cause of the garden. He held many conferences with Adam and Eve, especially with Eve, and they talked over many plans for improving their methods. One day, during a talk with Eve, it occurred to Serapitatia that it would be very helpful if, while awaiting the recruiting of large numbers of the violet race, something could be done in the meantime immediately to advance the needy waiting tribes. Serapitatia contended that, if the Nodites, as the most progressive and cooperative race, could have a leader born to them of part origin in the violet stock, it would constitute a powerful tie binding these peoples more closely to the garden and all of this was soberly and honestly considered to be for the good of the world, since this child, to be reared and educated in the garden, would exert a great influence for good over his father's people. It should again be emphasized that Serapitatia was altogether honest and wholly sincere in all that he proposed. He never once suspected that he was playing into the hands of Caligastia and Dalagastia. Serapitatia was entirely loyal to the plan of building up a strong reserve of the violet race before attempting the worldwide upstepping of the confused peoples of Urantia. But this would require hundreds of years to consummate, and he was impatient. He wanted to see some immediate results, something in his own lifetime. He made it clear to Eve that Adam was oftentimes discouraged by the little that had been accomplished toward uplifting the world. For more than five years these plans were secretly matured. At last they had developed to the point where Eve consented to have a secret conference with Kano, the most brilliant mind and active leader of the nearby colony of friendly Nodites. Kano was very sympathetic with the Adamic regime. In fact, he was the sincere spiritual leader of those neighboring Nodites who favored friendly relations with the Garden. The fateful meeting occurred during the twilight hours of the autumn evening, not far from the home of Adam. Eve had never before met the beautiful and enthusiastic Kano, and he was a magnificent specimen of the survival of the superior physique and outstanding intellect of his remote progenitors of the prince's staff. And Kano also thoroughly believed in the righteousness of the Serapitatia project. Outside of the garden, multiple mating was a common practice. Influenced by flattery, enthusiasm, and great personal persuasion, Eve then and there consented to embark upon the much-discussed enterprise to add her own little scheme of world-saving to the larger and more far-reaching divine plan. Before she quite realized what was transpiring, the fatal step had been taken. It was done.